I am the nature hacker and this is your world. So I did a very exhaustive testing run on the Noble Metal battery. <clears throat> Basically I just tested a bunch of different metals and the results were quite interesting. The most important result is that with with um, <clears throat> adding hydrogen peroxide I can get you know in the amp range for any metal for any metal. I mean the amperage is no longer an issue you know so um, <clears throat> the only issue now is which metal to pair with copper and I tried nickel nickel didn't I tried a very imp I tried I tried an actual nickel and uh, you know which is very impure it's 25 percent nickel 75 percent copper but <clears throat> I got worse results than copper so I'm assuming that nickel is worse than copper I do have some uh, solid nickel coming in so I will be able to test that, but <clears throat> it seems like copper is our anode. I mean, I've tried other anodes, at least with this type of uh, with this type of electrolyte, uh, <clears throat> copper is going to be the anode. Um, if we use a very highly oxidating type of electrolyte, like chlorates, perchlorates, iodates, um, nit you know, nitric acid, nitrates, <clears throat> if we're using those type of acids then we might have a different anode you know our anode might be silver or our anode <clears throat> might be platinum something like that but for now with this pseudo non-oxidizing electrolyte you know like the hydro the hydro acids hydrochloric hydrobromic coppers are anode you know it's just that's just what it's gonna the way it's gonna be so um, I tested copper with a bunch of other uh, cathodes and like I said, don't have to worry about the amperage. The amperage is going to be the same with, you know, the same surface area. So the only issue is what the voltage is going to be. So <clears throat> copper iridium is our number one finisher. I, I still need to get osmium metal. Um, I have some coming in, hopefully within a few weeks. So I'll test osmium. But copper iridium gave roughly tentative results, 1.2 volts. My piece of iridium was so small that I could only get that 1.2 volts for a split second, you know, and I couldn't really reproduce it. So I have to get a bigger piece of iridium. So uh, hopefully I'll be able to do that. Um, I don't have the money to do that right now, but hopefully within a week or so I'll be able to buy a bigger piece of iridium. But great preliminary results there, 1.2 volts, which is magnificent. Our standard is gold, copper gold, and that's uh, 1 volt copper gold so that's a pretty good standard but gold is overpriced it's at 1200 an ounce which is even higher than iridium and everything else so um, <clears throat> iridium is the way to go uh, 1.2 volts um, so then so below iridium is ruthenium which is pretty surprising actually ruthenium is 1.06 volts and which is higher than gold but ruthenium is only like 50 bucks an ounce and gold is like 1200 so ruthenium is an amazing replacement for gold. Um, the only problem with ruthenium is it's a little harder to plate, which I will get to plating uh, later on. But, um, okay, so that was um, number two was ruthenium. Number one was iridium. Number three was gold at one volt. Number four was our good friend Molly Bedenum, which is a great contender there because Molly is just, dirt cheap you know you can make that centered molly electrode dirt cheap so I think the copper molly is going to be um, is going to be you know a battery technology in the future but it's not the highest you know it's 0.75 volts which is you know pretty decent but uh you know I always you know I go for the jugular so I'm gonna go for iridium or osmium whichever gives a higher result and uh, you know it's going to be challenging as I'll get into later but um you know keeps me from getting bored right it's a harder hard stuff but uh, you know it's worth it it gives you a big uh, big boost so after copper molly comes copper platinum and and that gave 0.7 volts so platinum kind of sucks um after that came copper rhodium rhodium kind of sucks at 0.63 volts after that came copper vanadium at 0.6 volts <clears throat> so vanadium is the other um, refractory metal like molybdenum but it's just not as good as molly and I'm also gonna try neobium I don't have good hopes for it because it probably forms an oxide layer and I'll get crap amperage 
So all of these I got, you know, I could pull the one amp from. Um, but uh, Neo, Neo, not Neo BM. Um, tantalum, I tried tantalum, I get 0.75 volts, but I got like zero amps. So, you know, those refractory metals that form an oxide layer, uh, they're called valve metals. Those just don't work for us. So you have to have a refractory metal that's not a valve metal. And neobium is supposed to be in between, so I'm going to try that out. <clears throat> but really right now, uh, as far as refractory metals, molybdenum seems to be the only, only option non-precious basically the only option for this noble metal battery that's non-precious is molybdenum so uh and copper silver which is horrible at 0.15 volts so so the issue here becomes these these awesome metals that gave like you know iridium that gave like 0.2 volts and maybe osmium which i'm gonna get and see how that does but um the problem is here's how the coating regimen has to be so you got your copper, okay? Now, you know, we don't want to use pure gold or pure iridium. It's just too expensive for a cathode. So what we do is we do copper sheet or mesh plating. So the plating regimen has to be copper. Then you have to plate the copper with nickel, okay? Then you have to plate the, copper, the nickel with gold, all right? And then you have to plate the gold with ruvenium. And then you have to plate the ruvenium with iridium or osmium. So... That's the that's the drawback is that if you want to use these ultra high voltage metals like iridium, you have to go through this crazy plating regimen, right? So that's the only drawback. So I mean, gold is pretty, e pretty a good choice if it were a good price because it would just be copper, nickel, gold, you know. But <clears throat> ruthenium requires you to plate with gold first and then ruthenium. For not much of a gain in voltage, but only 0.06 volts better for the ruthenium plating. But then the <clears throat> plating with iridium after that will boost you up to 1.2 volts. So pretty dang good there. And, and that's worth it for me. That's going to be really hard. Iridium is the hardest, most difficult metal to plate with. But um, i got to develop a method, you know. I want to get that 1.2 volts. So... All right, so then uh, besides those testing, um, I also tested the acids, hydroiodic, hydrobromic, hydrochloric. Hydroiodic is a no-go. Um, it forms lots of compounds on the copper, you know, just like insoluble compounds, just not good, you know, just like rust, you know, not very good. And, uh, you know, it doesn't really accept oxidation good, you know, it's just, it's worse than hydrobromic acid in every way in voltage and amperage, and it forms the crud, so... HI, no go. <clears throat> All right, now HBR, and you know, this type of testing, I'm just using copper gold, you know, copper anode gold cathode just as my standard testing setup. So um, HBR was really interesting. It gave 0.83 volts on an open circuit. So just testing voltage is 0.83 volts. And this is after HBR plus some hydrogen peroxide and then let it settle and whatever. <clears throat> and that this is where we're at. So we it's HBr plus hydrogen peroxide, and it's it gives 0.83 volts open, and then 0.7 volts on with a load, and uh, it gives 0.15 amps. <clears throat> so you know, like I said, I could get one amp from this stuff, yeah. But you know, once it stabilizes, it comes down to like 0.15 and just stays there, unless you add more hydrogen peroxide. But <clears throat> anyway, the HBr it it kind of holds on to the oxidizing power of the H2O2 even after the H2O2 is used up because the H2O2 basically seems to oxidize the HBr into just liquid bromine, which is an oxidizer. So that's why that, that I'm getting pretty decent stable amps at 150 milliamps or 0.15 amps. So, so uh, really what we're looking at there is like, uh, you know, 0.83 volts on open, 0.7 volts under load, 0.15 amps. Okay, now HCl, hydrochloric acid, gave a higher voltage, an open voltage of 0.96. But under load, it seemed to go down to about the same 0.7 as the HBr. So, you know, or in actual use, they seem to be about the same voltage. But then <clears throat> HCl goes down to 0.04 amps, so only 40 milliamps after it stabilizes for a while. So the hydrochloric acid doesn't hold on to the oxidizing power of the H2O2 as well as the HBr does but the HCl <clears throat> seems to have a higher open 
open circuit voltage so it's kind of it seems to be a trade-off i mean maybe hbr is just better and you know because it has the same <clears throat> voltage under load as hcl but i don't know i feel like i feel like it probably will be a combo between those two as far as the best electrolyte might be a combo hcl hbr but i would lean more towards hbr possibly i don't know but <clears throat> anyway and then what that got me thinking is, what about the Dead Sea? Because the Dead Sea has a, a decent mixture of uh, chlorides and bromides. So maybe if you just mix some Dead Sea salt with phosphoric acid and distill that, you'll get a you know a hydrobromic, hydrochloric acid mix that might be really good. So I'll try that. But <clears throat> HBr seems to have a little more promise just because it seems to hold the oxidizing power of H2O2. But I mean, if you're just bubbling oxygen through the electrolyte constantly HCl might be better just because it produces a higher uh, open current voltage or open circuit voltage so <clears throat> it's a trade-off you know with less oxygen HBr does better with more oxygen HCl probably does better so that's pretty much it you know the current uh, top contender for the noble metal battery at least my version of it I mean these other <clears throat> metals are have I probably will find their own uses and they will have good uses, but I'm going to go for the highest voltage possible, so I'll do uh, iridium or osmium. I can't wait till I get some osmium in so I can test that out. But, um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. That's pretty much everything. Um, you can always watch this again if you it's really dense with info. So, um, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. I am the Nature Hacker. Do work.